Today on North Carolina Law TV, David Daggett, injury and disability lawyer from Daggett Schuler Law out of Winston-Salem, talks to us about distracted driving. And they have become cognitively addictive. Yeah. We have a hard time putting them down. Picking up your cell phone mm -hmm. and glancing down to look at your text message, just to do that, you could be driving the length of a football field. If you're a passenger in the car, for goodness sakes, don't let your driver text and drive. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all next on this episode of North Carolina Law TV. <laughs> Distracted driving is not a new phenomenon. The official government website, distraction.gov, defines distracted driving as any activity that could divert a person's attention away from the primary task of driving. So, driving while distracted has been occurring for as long as driving has existed. Changing the radio station is a distraction. Eating your drive through burger is a distraction. Even talking to passengers is a distraction. And with the advent of cell phones, distracted driving has become a much more important topic of conversation. This is because text messages require more than just a casual glance away from the road. It demands visual, manual, and cognitive attention from the driver, all at the same time. And this is nothing short of a recipe for disaster. According to the CDC, every day over nine people are killed and over a thousand people are injured in crashes involving a distracted driver. David Dackett is here with us today to talk about distracted driving, the dangers of it, and what people can do to protect themselves. David, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a serious topic. It is. It's, um, why is it such a huge problem? Well, it's a huge problem mm -hmm. because we all have one of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have become cognitively addictive. Yeah. We have a hard time putting them down. I was doing it earlier today, not while driving, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. while having a conversation for somebody, you pick it up and you check. Mm -hmm. And b because of that, it's become very, very dangerous while driving. In fact, in recent years, some of our drinking and driving statistics have actually come down a little bit, mm -hmm. which is good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, it's more than filled in with That's distracted right. driving. And so it's become a, an epidemic yeah. in our country. It has, and, and one that um, can lead to some pretty negative consequences. Well, what, what we don't understand in the heat of it uh -huh. is picking up your cell phone mm -hmm. and glancing down to look at your text message. Just to do that, you could be driving the length of a football field. In just that short amount in of time. In just that short amount of time. Yeah. And a lot can happen lot during can happen that length time. of a football field. Absolutely. And the, the consequences can be just devastating. They Lives sure are shattered. It's, it can be bad. It can be bad. Now, there are, many, uh, there are laws in many states that um, prohibit people from using handheld yes. while driving. Yes. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between hands-free and hands-held and the safety of that? Well, well sure. In North Carolina, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to text and drive. Mm -hmm. uh, but... It's hard to enforce because how does somebody know I'm texting or dialing a phone number? Right. Both are just as distracting. Yeah. One's illegal and one's not. So it's very, very difficult mm -hmm. to enforce the texting and driving. It is. Now, uh, some states like New York, you're only allowed to use hands-free. You, right. you can't even pick up the handheld. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we need to know is, in either circumstance, mm -hmm. very, very dangerous. Yes. Uh, on one of our earlier shows, we did a piece mm -hmm. on traumatic brain injuries right. in mm -hmm. the advance of the neurosciences. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're learning from neuroscience is there's no such thing as multitasking. Right. None of us can do two mm -hmm. things at one time. Mm -hmm. Everything oh. is done sequentially, right. one after another. Some people are capable of doing one thing after another very quickly, very quickly right. but the brain can't do two things at mm -hmm. one time. So no matter how good we are or how smart we are, mm -hmm. we try texting and driving or dialing and driving or email messaging or Facebooking while driving, you can't do two things at 
one time, mm -hmm. and it's a time bomb rolling yeah. down the road. So it's not texting and driving, it's texting or driving, based yeah, it, on what we exactly. know about it's what our brains can that's do. That's very good. Right? Right. Um, we might have to trademark that, texting or driving. Or You're driving. not doing both. Your choice, you can't do both. Your at the choice, same time. you can't do both. Proved by neuroscientists, right? Um, and, and we know that, that that can be pretty dangerous. Um, how can we avoid distracted driving accidents? Well, the way we avoid distracted driving accidents mm -hmm. is very similar to the way we avoid drunk driving accidents. Okay. Is we got to be aware of the dangers. Mm -hmm. We need positive peer pressure. If you're a passenger yeah. in the car, for goodness sakes, don't let your oh, driver yeah. text right. and drive. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a re recipe for disaster, and yet you see that mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So positive peer pressure. Mm -hmm. We need to help each other. And then we need to have a circle of encouragement and support to help us prevent these senseless tragedies mm -hmm. from happening. Mm -hmm. It's very preventable. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it. Nothing is that urgent. We can put it down, turn it over, right. and, and not do it. And because, you know, in hindsight, we would say it's not, it wasn't worth it, right? It, right? It, it's never worth right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Never worth we it. We might not know that until after until we Until it's are, too late. Right, until it's too late. Now, who's most at risk for um, this distracted driving? Well, well it's interesting mm -hmm. because initially, mm -hmm. the vast majority of people texting and driving were mm -hmm. young people. Right. Mm -hmm. That's moved up through the age categories. You and me yeah, are, are okay. now uh -huh. are now we're part. We're busted and yeah, we're doing it. Right? Yep, we're part yeah. of that group. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, texting and driving doesn't have any age restrictions or age barriers. It applies to all yeah. of us. And even if you are an older, more experienced driver, you still can't do th two things at once. You still can't do two mm -hmm. things at once, mm -hmm. and it is still just as dangerous. Put it down. Put it down. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Encourage and support those in your family and those that you ride with. Yeah. Do not do it. That those are good pieces of advice. Yes. We appreciate you being here sharing that with us. Anything Thank else you. that we should add about this before we go, David? Well, there's a lot of texting and driving accidents out there, mm -hmm. and you just need to know that if you're a victim of that situation, you need to, to know that you have rights. Yep. Uh, you need mm -hmm. to know who to call, what to do, mm -hmm. so that you can be taken care of mm -hmm. should that happen to you. Great. Thank you for being with us Yep. Today. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Um, if you or someone you know has been injured or killed in a distracted driving accident, you can call David's office at 336-724-1234. Until next time, this is Nancy Hollett for North Carolina Law TV.